service of worship. Um, if you look around and you see any of those that attended the concert on Thursday night and they're glowing a little bit, their feet might be hovering off the ground. It was amazing. Um, it was beautiful. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone who helped put that on. So if you hosted students from Cal Baptist, thank you very much. If you helped prepare the meal, thank you very much. And I want to say, I don't know if she's here, Barbara Balance, she... Mm-hmm. She organized that meal, and it was a ton of work, and she did an amazing job. Thank you so much. That was a, a good administrative task. I'm impressed. I couldn't have done it, so thank you. A um, few other announcements to go through. Please sign in as we talk about a few things um, in those, those pads and the pews. Youth group meets tonight and Presby Kids Club. This is the last gathering before the summer break. And it's also your last, ch- oh, they'll be tie-dyeing shirts, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I, I can't wait. Um, wear clothes you don't mind getting stained. So, um, And this is also the kind of deadline. If you're interested in sending students, children on the mission trip, let Brett Lolly know today by 7 p.m. If, if you have children you want to go on that mission trip. Um, with that, let's... Greet each other with a (coughs) friendly, warm welcome. Happy Camp Sunday. Good morning. If I could ask everyone to be seated. And stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship. After this I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation Salvation belongs belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. 
Let us remain standing and open up to him 229 or found on the screen from all that dwell below the skies. Let us continue standing and sing before the throne of God above. Is he? 
live with Christ on high, with Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. One with himself I cannot die, my soul is purchased by his blood, my life is hid on Christ on high. With Christ my Savior and my God, with Christ my Savior and my God. Please be seated and let's have the children come forward for the children's message. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Do you like to meet new people? Do you like meeting new people? Well, my favorite, um, my favorite meet is Eli. My favorite. Did, friend near did you meet our house? Did you meet a new friend near your house? Yeah. That's so wonderful. His name is Eli. I like him. He's so funny. Huh? Eli. He does, he does this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, today for the children's message, I want to show you a video. You know, if you go to Camp Sawtooth, you're going to meet new people. You're going to meet new friends just like Eli that are really cool and really funny. And you're going to meet some amazing counselors. And they're funny and they're, um, they're a lot of fun. And you know what else? They know a lot about God. And that is what really makes him special. So I want you to meet in this video someone who's been a camp counselor. He knows a lot about God. Let's watch the video. Hello, my name is Devante Rowe, also known as Rev at Camp Sawtooth. I had the privilege to serve as a camp counselor for two consecutive years, summer 2015 and summer 2016. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be a camp counselor this year, but don't be alarmed. I'm sure you guys are counselors that are going to be prepared to give you guys the best summer experience. At camp, I had the privilege to meet friends that probably last a lifetime. The summer's approaching very quickly. I think it's time for you guys to apply if you haven't applied yet. Remember, camp is a good place for you guys to just experience God's glory in nature and to grow in fellowship with one another. And parents, don't think I forgot about you. Did you apply to be a cabin parent yet? Did you apply to be the medic? Did you apply to be a camp host? Or are you afraid of OTS? You know, that opportunity to serve where you have to wash dishes? Hey, this is your opportunity to serve. Come and be a volunteer at camp for me. And you get to experience camp as well, but you also get to help the camp counselors when they need help. It's, and it makes things just a bit easier for them. So remember, if you haven't applied yet, start to apply. Remember, God loves you. Be blessed. Remember that God loves you and be blessed. Why don't we pray for all the people that are going to be at camp this year, both the counselors and the cabin parents and all the students that are going to be there. Let's pray. God, thank you for everyone who's going to be part of camp this year. We pray that everyone from the adults to the youngest children, would be blessed and would remember how much you love them. We pray this in Jesus' name and all God's children said, Amen.
Please join me in the prayer of confession. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up women and men to live and die in faith. Forgive our indifference to your will. You have commanded us to speak, but we have been silent. You have called us to do what is just, but we have been fearful. Have mercy on us your faithless servants. Keep before us faithful people for us to follow, so that living with courage and love, we may inherit the kingdom promised in Jesus Christ and reign with him forever. Now join me in the assurance of pardon. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. May the God of mercy, who forgives us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen.
Please be seated. We now have a chance to come together in prayer, lifting up uh, those things that give us fear and anxiety, those that need healing and strength, and also to lift up praises to God for the good things that have happened in our lives. And we conclude by praying the Lord's Prayer together. Let's bow our heads. Gracious and loving God, we thank you this morning for the gift of children, for the gift of youth, for the new life that they breathe into our communities for the hope that they represent for a better world. Lord, we pray that you would bless these children. We pray even more, Lord, that you would bless us, we adults, because it is our responsibility to teach them, to guide them, not just in the ways of the world, but in your ways, to teach them not just to seek success, but to seek your kingdom, that they might not only live lives that have health and wealth, but that they may live lives that are meaningful and eternal. Lord, equip us to do that work. Bless those who are here in this church to work with children. Bless all those who will be working at Camp Sawtooth. Fill them with your spirit to instill in the young people a love of God and a heart that breaks where God's heart breaks to show this world that God loves them, that there is hope in Jesus Christ. Lord, we lift up to you now those among us who are in need. Lord, we offer blessings and praises for those who prayed for baby Chloe. The surgery was successful. We give you thanks for that surgery and pray that her health would improve and she would recover from that surgery. Lord, we pray for uh, Matt Larimer, uh, whose cancer has spread to the bones. We pray for your presence with him, your healing in his life, your wisdom to be with the doctors who are treating him. Lord, we give you thanks for another year post-cancer. Lord, we pray for the brother of Tom, who's having open-heart surgery on Wednesday. Bless him and bless the doctors. Lord, we ask for your help for those who lost homes and property from the hail and tornado that went through central Wisconsin last Tuesday. We pray for those who are rebuilding and recovering from that destruction. Lord, we ask your blessing on Davis Peterson. We ask for his safe travels as he heads back to Montana after church today to go and enlist in the Air National Guard. Bless him in that adventure. Keep him safe and Lord, may he honor both you and this country. Lord, we lift up all these prayers knowing that you are faithful because you sent your son to die for us on the cross. We pray as he taught us saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen let us stand and sing hymn 326 spirit of god descend upon my heart
When we read the scripture, I want to remind everyone that, that really that's the most important part of the service. It's more important than anything I say after it, more important than anything else that happens. This is God's word, and I hope that you hear it not as just an ancient text as something someone said a long time ago, but as God's word to you today. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 through 14. But watch out. Be careful never to forget what you yourself have seen. Do not let these memories escape from your mind as long as you live. And be sure to pass them on to your children and grandchildren. Never forget the day when you stood before the Lord your God at Mount Sinai, where he told me, summon the people before me and I will personally instruct them. Then they will learn to fear me as long as they live and they will teach their children to fear me also. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while flames from the mountain shot into the sky. The mountain was shrouded in black clouds and deep darkness. And the Lord spoke to you from the heart of the fire. You heard the sound of his words, but didn't see his form. There was only a voice. He proclaimed his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to keep and which he wrote on two stone tablets. It was at that time that the Lord commanded me to teach you his decrees and regulations so you would obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. This is the word of the Lord. If you saw the sea part and you saw Pharaoh's armies engulfed in the flood, if you heard the thunder when God handed Moses the Ten Commandments on that mountain, how could you forget it? How could you forget to teach your children about it? But it happens. We fail to pass on our faith to our children and our grandchildren. You know, statistics, they can be made to say one thing and then another, but on this matter, all the statistics agree. I'll just give you two. 61% of today's young adults had been churched at one point during their teen years, but they are now spiritually disengaged. 61% used to be connected to a church and now disengaged. Second one, National Study of Youth and Religion published, this is from 2009, indicated an approximate 30% drop in frequent religious service attendance across multiple Protestant denominations. 30% drop. That was in 2009. Now all the statistics at least agree on something. I wish it were better news. But we do, we forget to pass on our faith to the next generation. The youth ministry department at Fuller Theological Seminary where I attended has been studying this. They have social science professors who study these trends from a social science perspective. And they, in 20 years, they've isolated a few factors that are the keys that keep children in church as adults. They've isolated, they know pretty much what are the important factors that make it so that a child who's brought up in the church stays. And it might surprise you, give you a hint, it's not expensive, entertaining programs. It's not music. It's not going to a Christian school or college. The number one factor that determine whether a child would keep the faith is parental involvement. When parents talked with their children about their Christian faith in the home, at the dinner table, at lunch on Sunday mornings, when they talked about the faith in the home, those children were more likely by far than any others to stay engaged with Jesus in adulthood. 
So the most important thing the church can do, actually, is to teach parents how to teach their children. Because I've been in ministry long enough to know the main reason why parents don't talk to their children about faith is they're, they're not sure if they could answer the questions. So we as a church need to teach parents to know enough about the Bible and about Christian teaching that when those teenagers ask their hard questions, they can answer them. They can have a discussion at the dinner table with their children about what we believe. The number two factor is interesting. The number two factor is also not some of the things you would expect. The second biggest factor was that those children who stayed in the faith had other adults from their church congregation that took an interest in them, that prayed with them and for them, that talked with them about what was going on in their lives. My youth ministry professor said every child in a congregation should have five fans, adult fans, five members of the congregation who are not their parents, not their pastor, not their youth leader, but five adults who are simply fans that cheer them on through life. That's the second most important factor. And that's exactly what happens at camp. The counselors, the cabin parents, the folks who work in the kitchen, they all take an interest in those children and love them and teach them about God. That's why I support camp. That's why this church should support camp. Because the culture around us gets ever less Christian as the values of the culture become focused on greed and money and power and fame and sex, it's up to you to teach the children of this congregation about Jesus and to take an interest in their lives and to support others like Camp Sawtooth that do the same. There's a story when the Wright brothers flew that first airplane they weren't in total seclusion. It turns out that there was a family nearby that airfield where that plane took off, and with that family was a young boy. And a week later, they interviewed this family, and the reporter asked the little boy what it was like. And the little boy spread out his arms, ran around, and made airplane noises. So literally, children have been imitating airplanes since the first airplane took the first flight. But children will imitate what they see. I've seen it in my daughter. You've seen it in your children and grandchildren. But what do they see in this world? What do they see at school from their peers? What do they see on TV? What do they see on the internet? What are they going to imitate? And that's the bad news. But the good news is that even though the culture has changed, children are still open to learn. So we have a chance to make a difference. Camp Sawtooth has a chance to make a difference in those children's lives because they still, like that little boy imitating the airplane, they still imitate what they see. Last year when I was at camp, I saw something that amazed me, and it wasn't it wasn't, if I had seen it a year, a year before, I may not have thought anything of it. But I know what, what junior high kids, adolescent kids are like. And they can be mean. What they see in the world is a bunch of ugliness. A world that criticizes anything that's not rich or beautiful or sexy by Hollywood standards. We have a culture that excels in tearing people down. But this is what I saw at camp. I saw a talent show where these fifth and sixth graders, they stood up in front of their peers and they did whatever they were good at. Singing a song, doing a dance, whatever it might have been. And the other children cheered them on clapped and celebrated them. My little girl, Jaya, about a, at a year and a half, she got so excited, she ran out, she got away from her home, and I ran out in front of everyone and shook her little body, her little one and a half year old body, and guess what they did? They cheered for Jaya. 
But that's because they're imitating what they see at camp. They don't see that at school on the playground. And they sure don't see it on TV or anywhere else. They see at camp love and respect and compassion. And so aside from taking the parents of all the children, kidnapping them and making them learn Christian theology, the best thing we can do is send kids to a place where adults show them how to love, show them how to have respect, show them how to build up rather than tear down. That's what makes a difference. If we want to obey the command of God to pass on our faith to our children and grandchildren, we need to do it here in this church and we need to support Camp Sawtooth. I close with a saying that when I read it struck me and I'll never forget it. When a child has no parents, we call them an orphan. But a church is an orphan when it has no children. Camp is an amazing place. They're doing amazing work, but I don't want you to take my word for it. I want to ask Davis Peterson to come up. He spent several years at camp, and it's made a difference in his life, and he'll tell you about it himself. Hello again. I'm back up here. You have to listen to me. Um, so when Aaron asked me to come and say some words about camp, uh, I figured I'd sit down and write something really meaningful about my time at camp, um, but I did not do that. So there's nothing more meaningful than coming up with it right when you're up here. Um, so camp, uh, I've been going for this last summer was the first summer I missed since I was in the third grade. Um, so I went for going into third grade, going into my senior year of high school. Um, I went as a program staff in training uh, for four or five or, I don't know, six years maybe. Quite a long time at that. And then uh, this summer, I'll be a counselor up at church camp for the first time uh, for the whole year. And I'm really excited for that uh, for a few different reasons. The first reason is the friendship and family that's formed at camp is something that I really can't uh, put into words. I have met uh, friends there in the fourth grade who are now gonna be counselors with me up at camp. And that's a really big, uh, that's a great experience to go through. And so I'm really excited for that. Um, and it's just, camp generates such an amazing uh, environment for people to be in. Uh, people always say that God is everywhere, um, he's in everyone, but I never really got that um, until I got up to Camp Sawtooth. You really, you just feel it um, everywhere you are in all the love that you see um, and everywhere you look uh, as you're in such a beautiful place up outside of Ketchum. And um, I think the most important thing I've ever done uh, in my personal life, uh, ties into what Aaron was talking about. Camp is just such a welcoming place. And so I'd get up there, I would feel welcome, um, I would be who I was and who I wanted to be. Um, but then I would come back home and it would change. It's different. School is not the same, people aren't as supportive. Uh, but as I got older, I decided why when I go to camp, do I get to feel so awesome all the time? And then I come home and I change how I act and who I am. So the most important thing I ever did was take everything I felt at camp, everything I felt from everyone else and I tried to give to everyone, and I tried to bring that home and you know act that way all year round uh, and really generate that kind of positive feeling everywhere I went. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, I think camp's fantastic for kids to go to. They meet amazing people. I've had awesome counselors. I'm hoping kids don't come home and complain to their parents about how terrible of a counselor Davis is. Um, hopefully they come home with good stories like I have. And uh, just 
want to go back and want to take their friends and just really introduce them to camp and the feelings it creates and uh, to God. Because everyone has um, God in them and faith in them. And Camp Sawtooth is a way of bringing it out of everybody. So go to camp. You'll enjoy it. And uh, it'll be a good decision. Thank you, Davis. I look at you and I see a man of God. And I have no doubt that those children are going to see the same thing. And I hope they imitate you. Let's say a prayer. Gracious God, we thank you that you call forward young men and women to minister both to their peers and to those younger than them. Lord, I thank you that you've given us a faith worth passing on to our children and grandchildren. You've given us the truth. You've given us eternal life. You've given us yourself in Jesus Christ. And through him, we are made one with God. Lord, that's worth passing on. So I pray that you'd empower and equip this church to pass on the faith that you've given us. Equip parents. Help us teach parents so that they can sit across the dinner table from their teenagers and they can explain. They can answer questions. They can dialogue and talk with their children about who you are, Lord. I pray that you'd bless those who work with children here to show them love, to show them Christian character so that they can and will imitate it. Lord, I pray that you bless Camp Sawtooth. May your spirit rest in that place and in the hearts of everyone who goes there. May your will be done this summer and may Jesus be glorified. Lord, we thank you. Bless us as we receive this offering. May this be a portion of what you've given us, may it be used to enlarge your kingdom here on earth. We ask this in Jesus' powerful name. Amen.
benediction. May the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.